Alright, what's up? Um, last time I posted was like September of um last year, so it's been a couple months. So it's been a couple updates. Um, first off, a uh, new keyboard. Um, earlier I was using um Eagle Tech um RGB uh keyboard with um Otemu blue switches. Uh, so it's mechanical keyboard, not pretty nice, but um. Recently bought um, this is the Unicom uh, Ultra Classic. Uh, it's a buckling spring keyboard, so it uses you know same type of switches you know from like uh, 1990s I believe uh, for the Model M IBM Model M keyboard. So it uh, feels great. Um, it's a really nice uh, mechanical feel to it. Um, it's actually not mechanical though. Like traditional mechanical keyboard, it's actually a membrane keyboard, but has a really nice mechanical feel to it. Um, yeah. Well, one thing I mentioned last video about um, the RCA's being switched on the the uh, the Magni. Um, apparently, I think that might be normal or like standard for American equipment. But for the topping uh, the DAC on the bottom, uh, that's Chinese actually. Um, so it might be, you know, different standards I guess. So it might be reverse. So I think. Mac is normal and thinks the topping that's a weird one. But you know, it is what it is. Um so I actually bought a couple of um more portable um things to listen to like IEMs and um also like an on ear. Go to IEM first. So these right here, the this is the Tin Audio T two Pros. Um by the way, here's the RCA oh no blah, what the heck am I saying? This is the um 3.5 millimeter um, input. Uh, you know, really nice. Uh, you know, it's like a fake carbon fiber looking thing, but overall, not a pretty nice cable. Um, here's MMCX connectors. Kind of annoying, not gonna lie. Don't really like the connector type, but you know, it is what it is. Um, yeah, here's a uh, IEM itself. Uh, it's a dual driver. Um, it's like one dynamic. No, I mean they're both dynamic, but it's like one like large driver and one like tweeter for like uh more trebles and stuff. But um right here the tips right in here, uh these are the complete foam tips actually and um they do definitely do um a decent job at bringing down some of the trebles because it can be very sibling at times. Um but that's only if you use like the stock um like tips, like the silicone and the foam tips. The foam tips originally no, I thought they're pretty good, you know, they squish they're, uh, they're squishy. And, um, you know, but they kind of got kind of stiff in my ears. But, um, yeah, they're pretty, uh, overall, you know, sound pretty good. Uh, sound really nice for, um, IEMs. Here, these are the cost KSC 75Xs, uh, it's Master of Collaboration. These are basically the same thing as the KSC 75s, but, like, with the crappier cable. Um, these sit on your ear by this ear hook. Alright, these look very ugly. But they sound pretty good for the price, for like 15 and 17 or something like that. So, you know, pretty cheap. Um, sounds pretty good. It's one like you don't care what you look like because you look really stupid with these on, but sounds pretty good for the price. Um, next, I want to move on to, um, I guess, new update in the ant department. So, here is uh, my bottlehead crack. So, this is a DIY kit. I bought it and, um, I basically built it myself, soldered everything. Um, I low key breathed in a decent amount of like lead smoke, and I got some of it in my eyes. So I really hope I don't have lead poisoning. I I should get checked for that. But anyways, uh, so this is a kit you can buy. Um, I won't say how much because uh, I'm very poor now. I don't know what I'm doing in my life. But anyways, um, here's the original. Oh uh, nope, not that one. Here's the original um, bottle hood crack that you, you like if you make it directly from like um, just from the kit without like modifying anything. So it look like the wood is uh, very light in color. The top is very light in color as well. Um, so what I did basically um, I'm taking wood in class right now. So um, I took uh, this kit over on like the wood base uh, to stain with a dark walnut color, and then um, I used um, a matte black spray paint on the top. So you know, overall, I think it looks pretty sexy in my opinion. Not gonna lie. Um, so as you can see, these are the tubes that I'm using. It's a tube amp, if I didn't mention already. Um, so it uses uh, tubes to 
power. As you can see, the tube right there, you can see it glowing. Um, so yeah, um, let me show you the inside real quick. Uh, it's actually on, so it might be dangerous. But as long as I don't touch anything, it should be fine. But, uh, yeah, you can see some of it. It has a speedball upgrade, for those who actually know. And, um, hold up, shoot. Alright, safe. I tried upgrading um, the volume potenti uh, potentiometer. No, I really cannot talk today, but that's okay. It's like 3 a.m., 3:30. But anyways, um, I tried upgrading it to a step attenuator. Um, you know, this was more of a generic step attenuator. I think um, I'm gonna replace it um, with a better one. But uh, yeah, these do get pretty hot. Um, the temperature, you know, you definitely don't want to be touching that glass. Um, gets pretty hot you can actually burn yourself but um this tube map is um right, first off why do you want a tube map well um it actually colors the sound um so this is classic solid state you know it just provides clean power um to your headphones but these it can color the sound maybe like add more sound stage more like a tighter like more bass or something like that the overall just makes it sound uh different you know it's pretty subjective uh, depending on what you say is better <laughs> but you know i think it sounds uh, better specifically for the sennheisers because this is an output transformerless tube amp so that means that uh something like i think it's like the higher impedance like the more power or something like that i'm not exactly sure but basically you want to use this headphone amp with higher impedance headphones with high resistance <laughs> so yeah i'm using that uh, with my sennheisers right now and um, I'm actually uh, using, uh, so since I have both solid state and tube amp, I want to be able to use both um, when I'm switching headphones or using different headphones because I, I don't want to be using um, the tube amp with like my lower impedance headphones. So I have a RCA splitter that goes into my DAC and uh, splits two ways into um, both of my amps. So, you know, easy uh, switching uh, for my headphones. And um, I also built uh, this audio box switcher real quick. Um, so, uh, I can, I'll, show you the, uh, I, I'll show you the inside. You know, it's pretty DIY. Um, but, you know, I'm pretty proud that I built this. Bought these parts from China. Save your money. But, um, so yeah, remove the cover here's the insides um so that's a two-way switch right here switch between the two different audio inputs um so that's just yeah basically um that's the input or output and goes the two input or outputs so the reason why i say that is this is basically just a cable extension in a sense but it's like um since yeah, this is switches between um the two um jacks you can use it as either um one um like you can plug your phone in or something but in my case i'm using my amps but you can plug in the source you can switch between two headphones or you can plug in two sources and switch between those two sources to one headphone so right now i'm using this as like an a b tester for my um for like solid state versus um the tube amp so that's that um yeah, now I want to go on to uh, the headphones. Um, so the most recent, uh, the f few most recent purchases I made were uh, three headphones. First of them was uh, these. These are Mono Price M1060s. These are another plain magnetic headphone. Um, shout out to my sister for buying these for, uh, for Christmas. Uh, bless up. But um, yeah, I did a couple mods to this. Um, First off, I uh, got 3D printed, um, you know, headphone grill from um, my library because saving money, JK costs money. But like, my school didn't have a uh, black um, like plastic to print with, so I had to go to the library. But um, the inside of the ear cuffs, you definitely can't see, but if you feel it, you can feel a phaser. I had 3D printed phasers for these, so if you, it's like a waveguide, it guides the sound. So like, I think it combines better or something. But yeah, and um, also have a uh, ZMF uh, mods as well. This uh, lambskin uh, pilot uh, headband pad, 
and a ZMF suede uh, ear pad. So it feels really nice, very comfortable. Um, yeah, so real quick, uh, Planet Magnetic headphones. Um, sounds pretty good. Um, I'd say they're wider than the hi fi mans that I have. And um, overall, I think the bass response uh, is pretty good. Um, yeah. So let's go on to the Philips Fidelio X2s. So um, these are uh, actually, I bought them used off of eBay. Um, you know, the headband was kind of broken a little bit, or like it's kind of peeling, but like, no, that's okay. Sounds still sounds great. Um, yeah, it's Philips. Um, the sound stage is amazing, you know, it sounds very wide, very immersive. Uh, pads are very soft as well. Um, you know, comfort strap, good stuff. Bass is like basically the strongest out of my uh, the, all the headphones I have. Um, so I think it's very good for gaming in general, you know, explosions, whatever. And then the sound stage makes it really nice as well. So, um, yeah, this is just standard dynamic driver, but sound stage is really nice. So that uses a 3.5 millimeter input. And um, I bought a bunch of uh, headphone um, cable, like uh, supplies to make my own cables, but they're in another box. And I'm too lazy to go over or look at them. But here's the cable I made for these headphones. Um, yeah, here's the jack. Um, it's a, uh, it's called, no, it's an Amphenol 3.5 millimeter jack. And then I uh, use Mogami 2893 uh, cabling with like, it's a quad channel. Uh, cable with like copper shielding so um, then I covered that uh, that cable in um, paracord and um, it's about seven foot in length and um, it terminates in a uh, quarter inch uh, Nutrick connector a uh, really nice connector um, it's a really nice cable overall I don't like it on these headphones particularly because this is uh, one input one single 3.5 millimeter input so it's kind of unbalanced so the left side uh, kind of is more heavy, but for uh, these headphones, for example, these are uh, two inputs for the headphones. Um, one for each channel, so um, it's definitely more balanced, like the weight-wise, so like not one side's pulling at it. So um, yeah, I'm waiting for some more parts from China. Could save your money again. Um, making cables for these, uh, the M1060s and the HE4XXs, they share the same type of cable. And uh, another one from Sennheiser's. But uh, yeah, the last purchase I made was um, these. These are the Audio Technica um, ATH or like eight, the AD seven hundred Xs, um, along with the Brainwaves uh, Micro uh, no uh, Velour um, XL uh, earpads. Um, so these have a uh, really nice soundstage as well. Um, they're deconstructed, deconstructed in the moment because I'm gonna replace the crap cable which is non-detachable with like 3.5 millimeter jack so I can make um, basically convert it into a movable cable um, I'm, right now I'm too lazy to actually do that so it's lays uh, you can it for now but I'll get to that soon oh, yeah good stuff I might need to buy more headphone stands for all these headphones Honestly, save your money. I probably shouldn't have bought everything that I have right now, but you know, life is life. I'm gonna live once.